The year was 1892, on a brisk January day in Georgia. The University of Georgia Bulldogs took the field for the first time. Dr. Charles Hurdy founded the program after watching football practice in Baltimore while earning his Ph.D. at Johns Hopkins. He brought a Walter Camp rulebook to the dogs' first practice and selected his lineup by tossing a football into the air. Whoever grabbed it first made the team. About 1,500 spectators attended the first game between the Dogs and the Bears of Mercer University, a small private college located in Macon, Georgia. 127 years later, over 92,000 spectators attend Georgia games every Saturday. Saturdays during the fall are the days that legends are made, especially in Athens, Georgia. If you've ever worn the red jersey and silver britches on a Saturday, you've been part of a growing list of college student athletes to play for the dogs. Some players have stood out since 1892. The following five players just scraped the surface of the list of Georgia greats. The first Georgia Bulldog to win the Heisman Trophy, an award issued to the most outstanding football player each season, was Frank Sinkwich. He set the Southeastern Conference rushing record of 1,103 yards as a junior that stood for eight years. He played that junior year with a broken jaw and eventually led the Dogs to a 40-26 victory over TCU in the Orange Bowl. During his senior season, Sinkwich set the SEC passing record with 1,392 yards and carried the Dogs to an SEC record 4,725 yards of total team offense. He scored the only touchdown in the Rose Bowl game against UCLA that year, despite playing with two sprained ankles. In total, Sinkwich rushed for 2,271 yards and passed for 2,331 yards and scored over 60 touchdowns. The Croatian-born Bulldog was not only the first UGA Heisman Trophy winner, but was also the first Heisman winner born outside of the United States. He was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame, as well as the State of Georgia Sports Hall of Fame. His number 21 jersey was retired in 1943. The quarterback and halfback, Charlie Trippi, played for UGA from 1942 to 1946, but took a leave during the 1944 season and part of the 1945 season to serve in the military during World War II. He led Georgia to an 11-0 record the following year, as well as an SEC championship. He played alongside Frank Sinkwich and led the Dogs to a Sugar Bowl win his senior season. Trippy also won the Maxwell Award, an award presented to the top college football player in the United States. Judged and selected by sportscasters, sports writers, the NCAA, and the members of the Maxwell Football Club. In 1959, he was elected into the College Football Hall of Fame. Roland Champ Bailey was an All-American cornerback at Georgia from 1996 to 1998 and made over a thousand plays in multiple positions, including cornerback, wide receiver, and special teams. Averaging 103.5 all-purpose yards per game, Bailey was seen as one of the greatest multiple threat college players during his time as a dog. As a sophomore, he was an All-SEC First Team selection. He was later selected by the Denver Broncos and was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2019 in his first year of eligibility. In 1982, Herschel Walker became the second dog to win the Heisman Trophy. During his freshman year, he rushed for 1,616 yards plus 15 touchdowns and led the Dogs to a 12-0 record and a national championship. He placed third in the vote for Heisman behind George Rogers and Hugh Green. As a sophomore, he finished second in the Heisman vote behind Marcus Allen after rushing for a career record 1,891 yards and 18 touchdowns. The same year, he finished as an All-American in the indoor 60-meter dash and outdoor 100-meter dash for track and field. As a junior, Walker finally won the Heisman after a season of 1,752 rushing yards and 16 touchdowns. 
Fran Tarkenton attended Georgia under head coach Wally Butts and was one of the top quarterbacks in the state after graduating from Athens High. He was heavily recruited by Georgia Tech and Auburn. It was the 50s, and Georgia lacked some valuable assets. But Tarkenton committed anyway after being persuaded by his 7th grade teacher's husband and Little League coach Jim Watley. He dodged being a redshirt in 1958 and entered the playing field as a third-string quarterback behind Charlie Britt and Tommy Lewis. The Dogs went on to win the SEC championship in 1959, and Tarkenton became the starting quarterback in 1960. He was named to the Associated Press All-American team the same year, and later drafted by the Minnesota Vikings in the 1961 NFL Draft. UGA Rivalries SEC football has always been known for some of its deeply rooted rivalries. Here are the top three rivalries between Georgia and other schools. The Deep South's oldest rivalry, Georgia versus Auburn. In the following weeks of Georgia's debut, the Dogs played Auburn for the first time. Auburn won that game 10 to nothing and commenced the Deep South's oldest rivalry. Later on in 1896, Hall of Famer Pop Warner and the Dogs defeated John Heisman, another Hall of Famer, and the Tigers in the Georgia-Auburn game 12-6 in Atlanta. Almost 51 years later, Georgia defeated Auburn once again with an amazing pass from Frank Sinkwich to Lamar Davis in the last three seconds to win 7-0. The world's largest outdoor cocktail party, Georgia versus Florida. The Georgia-Florida rivalry officially kicked off in 1915 when Georgia won 37 to nothing in Jacksonville for the first time. Later on, in 1948, when the rivalry was rich, the Dogs beat Florida in true Georgia tradition after Coach Wally Butts attended the game late and extremely ill. He told his players, quote, Fellas, I'm thankful to get here for the game, but I will not be much help to you in this condition. You have everything it takes to win. Do it in true Georgia tradition, unquote. The Dogs won 20-12. to 12. The rivalry was later deemed the world's largest outdoor cocktail party in the 50s after a drunken fan offered a cocktail to an on-duty police officer. The rivalry has been continuously played since 1926, with a break in 1943 during World War II. Clean, old-fashioned hate. Georgia versus Georgia Tech. To this day, Georgia reigns over Georgia Tech with 67 wins since the fall of 1893. Just 70 miles apart, the two schools face each other annually during Thanksgiving weekend. The Dogs have been the dominant side of the rivalry, winning 14 of the last 17 games. As all rivalries go, there's some trash talk, hedges have been torn up, and fields have been trashed. Over the years, Georgia Tech had been part of the SEC from 1932 to 1964. As Vince Dooley put it, Florida was big, and then Auburn was even bigger because of the SEC championship riding on it. But then Tech was the biggest of all because it's the state rival. It's the last game. It's the one you live with. The legendary Vince Dooley. From 1964 to 1988, Vince Dooley walked the sidelines between the hedges as the head coach of the University of Georgia football team. Hired in December of 1963, he was just 31 years old. Dooley led the Dogs to 20 bowl games, six SEC championships, and a national championship in 1980. In 25 years of coaching, he won 201 games, was voted NCAA Coach of the Year in 1980 and in 1982, and was later inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1994. Dooley, the legendary coach, added a new title in 1979 when he accepted the position of athletic director alongside his head coaching job. Under Dooley's AD role, Georgia Athletics won 18 national championships and 74 SEC championships. UGA 
In 1956, Ugga One, also known as Hood's Old Dan, made his first appearance at the University of Georgia, and the tradition of Ugga has stuck ever since. Frank W. Sonny Seiler has bred the line of white English Bulldogs for the last 63 years. Recognized all over the college football world by his spiked collar and air-conditioned doghouse, Ugga catches the eyes of many fans. Every generation of Ugga receives a varsity letter, along with their own custom-fit jersey. The University of Georgia is the only school to have its mascots buried within the stadium. Eight generations of Ugga are buried in marble vaults near the south stands. Before each home game, flowers are placed on their graves. The Dog Walk Two hours before kickoff in Athens, the Dog Walk begins. Fans, cheerleaders, and the Red Coat Band pack the Tate Center parking lot. Georgia players and coaching staff unload the team buses and walk through the cheering and often barking crowd to enter Sanford Stadium. The pregame tradition dates back to 2001 when head coach at the time, Mark Rick, established a spirit committee to boost fans and players' enthusiasm before home games. The Red Coat Marching Band Since 1905, the Red Coat Marching Band has played the soundtrack and battle hymns for the University of Georgia at every home game, bowl appearance, and the annual Georgia-Florida game in Jacksonville. Today, over 430 members of the Red Coat Marching Band welcome fans before games with a lone trumpeter at the southwest corner of Sanford Stadium and the Battle Hymn of the Bulldog Nation and close the day with Tara's theme from Gone with the Wind. The band plays glory after every UGA touchdown. Sanford Stadium Built in 1929, Sanford Stadium is the 10th largest college stadium, sitting over 92,000 fans each game. Sanford Stadium is named after Georgia's former president and influential figure for UGA athletics, Dr. Stedman Vincent Sanford. Sanford moved Georgia's football venue from Hurdy Field to a more central location, later named in his honor, with the new location being too small to seat the amount of fans brought to Athens for the Georgia-Georgia Tech game. The rivalry was relocated to Grant Field in Atlanta on the campus of Georgia Tech. Sanford then decided it was time to construct a stadium that could outreach Grant Field, building what was the heart of Sanford Stadium, seating just 30,000 fans. The first game played at Sanford Stadium was between Georgia and Yale. The Georgia Bulldogs won that game 15 to nothing. The recently named Dooley Field at Sanford Stadium is enclosed between the signature hedges. Some say that the hedges are used as a crowd control mechanism after Georgia fans stormed the field in 2000 following the tremendous win over rival Tennessee. Games played in the stadium are considered to be played between the hedges. The University of Georgia football program is packed full of tradition, history, legends, and it's growing every season. Go dogs!